Earlier today, I got an announcement that Beta 2 of the upcoming Elementary OS 5.0 release, codenamed Juno, was released today. So I am going to show you guys very briefly Beta 2 of Juno in a VM. I'm going to run through just a quick, very brief overview, but really that's not the main topic of this particular video. Today I wanted to discuss something. I really think that Elementary OS, this distro, is what we should be showing to potential new to Linux users. We as a community, Elementary OS, is what we should be showing those Windows and Mac users that are curious about Linux. Let's discuss this. So again, the big news today was that uh, Beta 2 was released for Juno, Elementary OS 5.0 Juno. Who knows when the official announcement or the official release will be ready. This is still very much beta software. When they say it's beta, they really mean it's beta. It's not for prime time. This is really an app uh, program developer snapshot. It's for people that or need this kind of snapshot to get their apps ready for the upcoming Juno release. So it's not something you want to put on a main production machine and try to live in it. It's not ready for prime time at all. But it does give you some idea about some of what is coming with the next version of Elementary OS. So very briefly, I'll show you guys the release announcement. And of course, I will link to the release announcement in the show description. So developer preview, Juno Beta 2 is out. It's time again, another beta release. Before we get too far, I want to remind you why we do betas. There's a special release intended for our third-party developers and highly technical users. So again, these betas are really beta software. Very, very buggy, not ready. To, to live in. This is again for third party developers who need this pre release in order to test and take advantage of, you know, all the new platform features so they can get ready to publish their apps in Elementary's App Center. And that's really what this is for. And they mentioned it's also for highly technical users, anybody that wants to help them, you know, fix any kind of bugs over the next, you know, however many weeks it is until we get the official version of Juno. Anyway, uh, some of the changes in Beta 2, the, uh, Gala and Greeter. Gala is their window manager. Uh, Greeter, I think, is the uh, the login greeter. Anyway, uh, better support for high DPI. Got uh, native GTK context menus for apps. The App Center got a lot of love. I may take a look at the App Center. The payment, sy payment system in the App Center got a little bit of love. Uh, some changes to the file manager. New icon style sheets and wallpapers. So... Changed a little bit with check buttons and radio buttons. I'm not a really big fan of this particular thing because the check buttons and the radio buttons are a little too similar for my taste. But again, that's personal preference on that. Uh, some new artwork, uh, new wallpaper. It's a really nice wallpaper. I may take a look at that. Photo, music, code. Code is their uh, plain text editor. It's really more of an IDE. I might take a look at that in a second. But again, really, the purpose of this video... Uh, is not to review Elementary OS Beta 2, and there's a reason why I'm not going to e review Elementary OS Beta 2, is because the Elementary OS devs specifically ask, please don't review <laughs> this beta software. It's buggy, it's not anywhere close to being what the uh, final release will be, so it kind of hurts the project when people in the press and people like YouTube reviewers review this beta software because it, it, it makes it seem like the project is, you know, full of bugs when, you know, the beta, it, it's a beta. So it's really unfair to, to review this thing. So I'm not going to review the beta. Anyway, uh, for the, anybody that wants to support Elementary OS uh, fin financially, they do have uh, ways to contribute to them on Bounty Source and on Patreon. Um, you can also make one-time donations when you download the ISO from Elementary OS. It has the option to give them a couple of bucks when you download the ISO. Uh, for those of you that use Elementary OS, uh, I would strongly recommend you give them a couple of bucks. They, they need financial support. I mean, this takes a lot of work to do what <laughs> Elementary OS is trying to pull off because it really is their own unique ecosystem. I mean, it's their own unique uh, desktop environment with their own custom built apps. I mean, it is a very tightly integrated uh, operating system and it is not something that is easy to do and it's not something you can really do on the cheap. So but you guys that use elementary and love elementary, give them a couple of bucks. 
Anyway, I installed the Beta 2 here in a VM uh, just very briefly. There's not much on the, uh, the ISO. The ISO was 1.4 gigs. Uh, it only has about 15 apps. So you see the one pane here in the menu? That is all the apps. <laughs> App Center, Calculator, Calendar, Camera Code, Epiphany Files, Mail, Multitasking View, their Music Player, Photos, Screenshot, System Settings, Terminal, and Videos. That's it. And I went ahead and added all 15 of these to the Plank dock at the bottom, uh, just for my own convenience sake. Anyway, taking a look at some of this, uh, open up the File Manager. Then I'll open up the multitasking view, go to the second desktop here. We'll open up a terminal on this one. So the second workspace here, go back to multitasking view. And of course I now have the option of, you know, moving between the two workspaces here. I think super and tab will also move me between the workspaces. It will super tab. And that is very cool. Uh, alt tab would uh, move me between windows that are open on the same workspace. So if I open up code here, that opened up my bash RC file in code because I had looked at it earlier. Anyway, so alt tab, you know, switches between windows on the same workspace that are open. Super tab switches between the workspaces. That is really neat. So pretty cool. Uh, for those of you that are used to having a minimize button on your windows, you don't have minimize. You have maximize over here at the far right. Maximize. And then, of course, you can unmaximize. You have the close button on the far right. You have no minimize. So you can't minimize anywhere on the window itself. If you want to minimize a window, it you can do it. The plank dock. You just go down here, click on the icon. It minimizes. Click on the icon again. It unminimizes. I'm going to close these programs out and move back to the first workspace. Kill the file manager. Anyway, very, very polished, clean, uh, professional looking product. Uh, their music player here, very, very reminiscent of some of the older versions of iTunes. Really just, I, I can't say enough how impressed I am with Juno. Again, as a project, I mean, I can't imagine how much time and effort it takes to build something like elementary OS. And the topic again for today is elementary OS, this distro, distros like it, because it's not just elementary OS. There's a couple of distros, custom built distros. They're complete ecosystems that are very polished and well put together. Uh, Deepin OS is another one that I often recommend. I know some people have concerns about Deepin because it is a Chinese uh, based distribution, but elementary OS in particular, this is what we should be showing to potential new to Linux users, those Windows and Mac users that want to come over because it's gorgeous. Uh, you know, I mean, I love distros like Ubuntu and Mint. Of course, you guys know I run Manjaro on my main production machine, but this is something that is so simple and intuitive your grandmother could use. Uh, it is every pixel is in its perfect spot. <laughs> like, I can't believe how polished and, and put together this thing is. Uh, it is just really an incredible experience, and I don't typically like distros with full desktop environments. Honestly, I would never put this on any of my machines, you know, to try to live in it because it's not my kind of workflow. But man, I could see myself installing this on a lot of family uh, computers and a lot of friends' compu computers that want to try Linux, have, you know, machines that, you know, have Windows. Windows is struggling maybe due to viruses or whatnot. And, you know, they don't mind blowing away Windows and giving Linux a, a try. This is something I think anybody would be happy with. First impressions, of course, are everything. Visually, this is stunning, right? I love this default wallpaper here for the upcoming 5.0 release, this purple wallpaper. This may or may not actually be the default wallpaper when it's released, but man, what a clean wallpaper this is. But you know what? It's got other wallpapers in here that are every bit as beautiful, if not more. So you've got just some gorgeous, like, nature photos here, like, this here that was actually just added to this uh, beta 2 release. This is one of the newer wallpapers that was just added. I mean, just incredible. Love, I mean, the wallpapers, the GTK theme, the icon set, uh, just everything about it. Again, it's like every pixel is in its perfect spot. 
you have your graphical software center, elementary, it's what, what they call their app center. So not an app store, you can't have an app store. Apple would frown upon that, but you can't have an app center. <laughs> and you know, anybody can figure out how to search for software in this thing. Of course, if you know the name of the program, you could just search for something here. So if HTOP was available, it is. You could just search, but you know, a lot of brand new users have no idea what software will be available, the names of the programs. They would just want to search for a music player, for example. Well, there's categories right here. We have audio for a category. I could click audio and then, you know, just look for music players. You know, we have things like Amarok here, Audacious and Banshee and, you know, quite a, a number of other music programs. If I wanted to click on one to install, let me find one that, you know, if I wanted to click on or, excuse me, install something like, well, let's pick something kind of lightweight. So I saw Audacious up here earlier. Where was Audacious? Light, minimal, shouldn't take too long to install. We have the option here. Uh, it says free on a lot of apps because of the way the App Center in Elementary is designed. You have the option of making a donation to the creators of that app which is a fantastic feature because again, a lot of these free and open source software projects need financial support. And this really makes it easy for you guys to contribute to your favorite projects. Matter of fact, let me go back and show you one. Hmm, I didn't mean to close out completely. Uh, let me find one where we can donate something. For example, the cozy audio book player. If I click on that, you see $2. $2, that is a suggested uh, donation to, for you to give, you know, a contribution. And you can enter your credit card number or whatnot and pay that $2. If you do the drop down here, uh, you can change that to $1, $5, $10. You can any, enter any dollar amount, including zero. If you want to just, I mean, it is available for free. It's free and open source and free as in beer. So free is a monetary cost. Uh, you don't have to donate to it. You could just choose free as an option and install it for free. But that is really neat that you do have options here for for donating to your favorite free and open source projects. Really love that about Elementary. One thing worth noting about the Software Center is, you know, it, it may not have all the apps you're used to, especially even though it's Ubuntu based, it may not have everything that Ubuntu has in that app center, in that graphical software center. But you know what, the things that are in there should work. So all the apps should be squared away. All the standard uh, default elementary apps, uh, those things should be just tip top shape, you know, no bugs, <laughs> hopefully. Anyway, it, it, it's a very much like, uh, I hate to compare it to, to, to Mac, Mac OS, but a lot of people do make that comparison with elementary. And it's, it's an apt comparison because Mac OS is, a well put together desktop environment and operating system uh, and elementary is kind of like that in that it is kind of a walled garden right it's this complete e ecosystem their own desktop environment their own window manager all their own apps uh, very similar to how mac os is very much that walled garden being based on ubuntu elementary os just works with pretty much all your hardware for the most part uh you're, you should have very little trouble with any kind of hardware detection with elementary OS. It should recognize, uh, assuming your printer supports Linux at all, elementary should be fine with it. Same thing with your Wi-Fi card, uh, getting your proprietary drivers for your graphics card and Wi-Fi chip and all that should be very easy, very straightforward. If a new to Linux user wants to install el elementary OS themselves rather than, you know, one of us <laughs> put it on a system for them. Uh, the install process for elementary is very easy, uh, very similar to the Ubuntu install process. You click OK about three or four times. Uh, maybe you create a username and password somewhere along the way. But other than that, you know, in about 10 minutes, you're done. Really, really simple, easy install elementary OS. Again, I think this is the perfect distro that we should be showing, again, to potential new to Linux users, anybody coming from Windows or Mac, this is what we should be showing. We shouldn't be showing them, you know, things like, I mean, I love Ubuntu Mate, you know, it's it's a really nice distro. 
but it is not that modern looking. It is not this well put together. It's things like Zubuntu. You know, I love Manjaro. Manjaro makes a really nice XFCE distro. I mean, the flagship Manjaro, but it's not... It's not elementary OS. It's not that wow factor, right? And we kind of need that if we're going to, you know, bring some of these folks over to our side. I mean, Linux may may never be for the masses, but, you know, pretty soon I think we're going to see bigger numbers than we're already seeing because Windows, of course, is, is starting to die a little bit, right? Microsoft is kind of pivoting away from from what they were doing with Windows anyway, so... We want to start converting a lot of these Windows users over to Linux Elementary OS. It's perfect for the new user. Elementary OS is probably not something that hardcore Linux users would use. A lot of, uh, you know, dev devs, uh, maybe multimedia professionals, that sort of thing. Elementary o OS, you know, because it's this walled garden, you know, you really can't do what you want to do. I mean, it's not that tweakable <laughs> you know you, you can't really customize it to your heart's content but for again the brand new user i think elementary os a plus plus before i go i do need to uh, give a special thanks here this show was made possible by ansem carlos david leor and rob these guys these guys are the producers of the show without their support this show would not be possible this show is also brought to you by the fine ladies and gentlemen you see their names on the screen those are my supporters over on patreon if you enjoyed this video please consider supporting the channel look for distrotube over on patreon peace guys